Kathy and I drove two cars up to the North Georgia Mountains with the intention of hiking from Neal Gap to Hot Pan Gap on the Appalachian Trail, covering roughly seven miles. On the way up, we stopped for coffee, breakfast, and some sub sandwiches for lunch. We parked the first car at Hogpen Gap and rode together to Neal Gap. Our plan was to take our time, enjoy the hike, stop for a leisurely hammock nap, and pick up our cars and drive home. A comedy of errors ensued, and our well laid plans were wrecked. First, our lunch. Okay, so uh, we hit our first uh, little snafu. Um, we parked at the Byron Reese. Uh, parking area and walked up to the uh, the mountain crossing Neil Gap area and uh, I guess that's about maybe a quarter of a mile or whatever it's not a, it's not a hard walk or anything and then we got there and we made our little videos that we've seen so far and uh, and we came on up the trail we were not far up the trail but we're uh, you know we gained a little bit of elevation and I started thinking about you know the day and everything and uh, so yeah, we had stopped and picked up some sandwiches for lunch, and they're in the car. They're in the car. <clears throat> it was my job to pack them. It's my fault that it that didn't get no. packed. I'm, I'm owning up to that. That's fine. Uh, so I turned around and started to go back. I dropped my pack and all my stuff and started to go back, and <laughs> my key is in my pack. So, <laughs> so Kathy sees me coming back in just a few minutes, and she's like, I thought it was farther than that, and yeah, it was. So I got back, and then she... Uh, you know, wasn't she wasn't fully aware of where we had parked and how far I was going to have to go. So her idea is, I uh, forget it. We'll just we've got a cliff bar, we've got some cookies, and we do, and uh, we'll be fine. You know, so I'm afraid we're going to starve to death. We so, will not die. So uh, unless we fall down the mountain. If we starve to death and die, uh, I'm going on the record right now saying it's her fault and she's accepting blame. We are not going to starve to if death. If we starve to death and die. Look at us. We are not going to starve to death. If we starve to death and die, <laughs> it's your fault because okay. you didn't. Okay. I will take full blame if uh, we die. We have a record. The day started out overcast with some visibility. The dogs were excited to be back on the trail, and even with the possibility of our impending death, Kathy and I were too. Another mile or two into the hike, our second snafu came to light. I said, hey, babe, what would you say you did with your car key? It's in the trunk in my bag. No! She told me when she did it, it just didn't register. We had left the key to the car we were hiking to in the car we were hiking from. Plan B. Hike a little further, find a good spot for a hammock nap, and hike back to Neil's Gap and retrieve our cars from there. As the day progressed, the cloud ceiling lowered, and so did the temps. Not severely, but along with the dampness enough to chill Kathy. We found a nice spot on Wolf Laurel Ridge and set up our tarp and hammocks. I put Kathy in her hammock and quilts to warm up as I made final adjustments to the tarp. Just as I got in my hammock, it started raining, so timing was excellent even if the circumstance wasn't ideal. Kathy finally warmed up enough and we both dozed off for a bit. When we awoke, we were totally socked into the clouds. It really was an ephemeral experience. All the normal sounds of nature were muted and visibility was cut way down. As I packed up, the song Sound of Silence started playing in my head and it looped through again and again as we hiked back to the car. Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you A vision softly creeping Left its scenes while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains within the sound of silence Loose dreams I walked alone Narrow streets of cobblestone Neath the halo of a stream lamp I turned my color to the cold and down When my eyes were stained by the flame 
flash of a neon light that split the night and touched the sound of silence. And in the naked light, I saw ten thousand people, maybe. Silence.